morning. Welcome to Ikate's Crossing. Okay, so let's see what's today's um, tarot card for reflection. Let's have a look. Oh, here we go. What's this one here? Okay, so we've got Six of Blades, which is all about the journey. So it's all about moving forward, leaving behind the old, whatever's going on. It could be a change of perception or idea, a plan. Something's been left behind. So let's look at the Six of Blades. Okay, Six of Blades, journey. I go in my canoe all over in my vision, over trees or in water. I'm floating all around. I float among whirlpools all around. I float among shadows. I go in my canoe all over in my vision, over trees or in water. I'm floating. Whose canoe is this I stand in? The one I stand in with a stranger, I go in my canoe all over in my vision. So it's a Northwest Coast Shaman song. Sim Xian, Sim Xian, Bear Horst in 1983. The rivers and oceans, the mountains and the plains were the Native American highways and byways. Journeys were made of, by vessel, horse or foot. The canoe, only vessel could be made of a burnt out log colped planks, birch bark or hide. The land from the Hudson Bay to the Mississippi and eastward to the Atlantic was a land of impressive forests. The Great Lakes and thousands of smaller lakes. The spider web of rivers, rivers made perfect waterways in the trackless wilderness. This was the land of the birch bark canoe, the land of the east woodlands. Algonquin speaking nations, the cloth kettle of the northwest Pacific coast, also used canoes. But these were big seagoing crafts made of massive hollowed out logs. Both peoples used canoes for trading, raiding and hunting. In the northeast, white birch, white birch trees grew abundantly. Long sheets of bark were stripped from them and stretched painstakingly over the cedar flint frames. The birch bark craft was fragile but it patched easily and responded beautifully to the paddle of an expert. The slightest pressure on the paddle accomplished split-second turns to avoid rocks, snags, sandbars and other hazards, allowing the pilot to follow the moods and meanderings of the waterway. Northeast canoes varied in size from one-man craft to the huge canoe du master, the master's canoe, which held a crew of 14 and as many as 5,000 pounds of cargo. In the northwest, giant redwoods or pines were felled, hollowed out and carved with a clan design. The carved Pacific seagoers were sturdy and were usually at least twice as large as the master's canoe, often much larger and had one or two sails as well as a crew of paddlers. They travelled a river that was every bit as massive as the Ohio, Ohio or the Mississippi but was found nowhere on the mainland. It was called Clin Otto and it is a river in the ocean much like the Atlantic Gulf Stream. The northwestern seafarers kept their law with the Song of the Sterra, a thousand years of successful sea travel are in that song. The stars can guide on a clear night, but in a fog one relies on the sea streams and rivulets that make up the Clin Otto with an inflated seal bladder and a knotted string. The steers woman could determine the speed of her vessel when she ascertained the current speed and how fast her paddlers had been pulling. She could calculate within minutes the boat's location by the line of the song she was singing. The world of the Native American was not made up solely of travels on this plane of existence. The nations of North and South America existed in a spiritual world. One could travel in visions and dreams and spirit as well as in boats, on horseback or on foot. A dream journey that was construed as a warning was enough to keep a man or a tribe from going to war, or it was enough to make them pack and move on to another hunting ground. A vision quest is a journey into the soul that maps out the direction of the rest of one's life, be it on this plane or on the spiritual plane. Journey shows a brave paddling his canoe silhouetted against the distant hills in the setting sun. The essence of journey is travel for gain, but not necessarily for pleasure. It represents a time of expansion. So reversed, the longest journey is the one within. Sometimes if our hearts are not pure, we are left without. The catchphrase is journey, travel and expansion. Physically, journey for gain, including an actual trip, though not necessarily over a long distance. <coughs> Excuse me. Mentally, daydreams and listening to them. Emotionally, night dreams and listening to them. Spiritually, the vision quest, the shamanic journey, the trip on the spiritual plane. Okay, so that's it from me. Don't forget to check the links down below. Check the links on my channel.
like, subscribe and ring the bell so you know when the next video will be uploaded. Take care and blessed be. Thank you.